Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's 900, I'm Mark. Now today it's going to be a very quick video because I've just got back off holiday and uh, I haven't had a chance to prepare much else. But I have had a load of questions about how I fitted the uh, USB charging point to this bike. Well, when I say loads of questions, what I actually mean is two. Um, but considering the number of followers I've got on the channel, that's quite a high percentage, so I'm going to go with it. So let's talk about that USB charging point. Now, can you see it there on the front of the bike? I'm guessing you probably can't, and that's the beauty of this solution. So I managed to fit a charger away from all the clutter on the handlebars, and uh, I'm gonna talk you through how I've done that. Now, first of all, what I'm gonna look at is uh, the various options that you've got, and then I'm gonna look at exactly how you wire that in. So there's a view of my handlebars, and um, down here on the left-hand side, nestled away, just almost behind the front screen, I've got this USB charging point. Um, you can see I've got this very cheap phone point as well that I've been using for the last, what, two and a half years. It's never let me down. It only cost about 16 quid. I can't say I'd recommend it if you've got an expensive phone, but for me, um, that one's fine. But the thing we're really concentrating on is this little USB charger that I managed to get tucked away down there where no one can see it. Right, let's have a look at some of the other options you've got for a USB charger. And we're going to start with what I call the boot space underneath the rear pillion seat. And uh, there is a place where you can plug one of these in. It sits, it's a sort of round device that's about that sort of size and a couple of inches long. And it, and it bolts into the bolts that are used to hold the tail tidy on there. So no holes to drill or anything like that. It just sits underneath there. But it takes up an awful lot of the space. So as you will have seen from a previous video, I actually removed it from my bike. And then that gives me room to put in things like um, a puncture repair kit, my helmet, a bike lock, anything else I want to put in that rear bit of boot space. So um, I've, I've removed mine because I didn't use it in the whole sort of um, year and a half that I had it installed. So let's get that pillion seat back on and then we'll talk about a couple of the other options which you can have up at the front end of the bike. So there's a picture of the um, kit that you get with the rear USB charger from Kawasaki. There are cheaper options available and they come in at under half the price and have two charging slots with them. So um, probably some better deals out there, but if you want to stick with Kawasaki, you've got to go with the kit. So if you do want a front charging point and you want to stick to Kawasaki OEM, then you can go with this front charger that they do for £73. It's quite expensive. It's quite an intricate sort of bracketry that holds it in place. It's a little bit difficult to fix and um, it's quite large and bulky even so. It's by no means a bad choice, but it's definitely an expensive one. Of course, you can go with a USB charger from another company. So this one is from Oxford. Now, this is the popular one that I see on a lot of bikes. But for me, it's just too big. The bracket's really wide and there's not a lot of room on a Z900 handlebar to fit this thing. It sits at an awkward angle and it really doesn't look very good at all. I would avoid that one, to be honest with you, even though it is definitely a very cheap option. So let's have a look at my little hidden USB tender, which is a very short cable running to the bottom of my phone. It's very neat. And that was the alternative to what I had before, which is running the cable the full length the bike and going under the pillion seat. So let's have a look at what you're going to need to fit in place a USB tender. First of all, you're going to need some zip ties for a couple of pence. Bullet connectors are a couple of pence. The USB tender itself is around about £20 and the SAE cable that you'll need to connect to that is about £7 or £8. So you can get the whole lot for under 30 quid. And here's how to fit it. So in traditional Blue Peter style, here's what I prepared earlier. And um, what we've got then is four allen bolts that hold on this front shield so they come off and just be careful when you take them off because they've got little black rubber washers underneath them so uh, these come off so we'll just take those and then work on the next bit so with that front screen off you can see some of the gubbins inside and you can see this cable here which is the one that i've added now it's deliberately left longer because what i'm not trying to do is introduce something new to the fabric of the motorbike this is an add-on and you know the actual usb tender itself is zip tied onto another cable so this isn't a permanent thing and i don't want it to look permanent i don't want to have the wires kind of taped up with the rest of the wiring limb so it has been deliberately left long and colorful so that it stands out so you can see it's just an add-on now what we need to do in order to get that plugged in for the first time is um, remove the indicator cluster and to do that there is an allen bolt there and then there's another one which is there at the front so you've got these two that need to come out as well they've got little white nylon washers that come with them and it's the same on the other side if we just push the handlebars up you can see there's one there and there's one there so once you've got rid of those this will be free 
except that the indicators will still be plugged in. Now the indicators, you can see I've just got these standard connector blocks and it's a question of pinching that in and pulling it apart and the same on the other side. So you pinch this in and then just disconnect and you can see inside there are the connectors that I've just taken it off and they're fixed quite steady so you can just get your fingers in there and work them loose. It's a little bit fiddly but yeah you can do it, it's not too difficult. So when the bike's new it does have a pair of cables with bullet connectors that are wired into the ignition system and are therefore providing power to an auxiliary USB charger. So that's exactly what we need and they're only live when the ignition is on. So that said, they are facing downwards and taped into the wiring loom. So effectively hidden down behind the steering and to get to them, you need to reach in behind the steering and unpick the tape before you can push them back up to a place where we can actually make use of them. So I've crimped on a matching set of bullet connectors to my SAE cable, which is already plugged into the back of the USB tender. And so now it's just a simple case of clicking the bullets together. Um, and to make sure, I like to put a piece of heat shrink over the top of them as well, just to make sure that those connections stay waterproof and sound. So let's tuck those cables neatly away. As I said, you could use shorter ones, but I'm gonna stick with that. And then we're just left with testing it. So we'll flip on the key. And as you can see, a red light comes up in the top left of my phone showing that it's actually charging. And as I turn it off, I will get a screen that comes up. So uh, happy days, I know that's all working. And there we go, I'll put the front screen back on and we're all done. That is one very neat tucked away USB charging point, which I use all the time. Not too difficult to fit and cost me less than 30 quid. Okay, so don't forget to keep your chains oiled and I will see you again soon.